In this video, I want to talk about how to use Google Trends as a tool or as a strategy for sourcing products. So first off, to use Google Trends, you want to go to www.trends.google.com or you can just search for Google Trends on google.com. Google Trends is a really, really amazing and powerful tool. A lot of people use it in the e-commerce world. Um, it it is obviously a platform that Google created and it tells you the trends in uh, searches for a particular keyword that you input and we'll, I'll do a walkthrough with you guys but it identifies trends in relations to Google searches. You can also compare two different uh, niches or uh, key terms that you want to compare searches for and we'll, we'll do that during the walkthrough as well. And then lastly, you can identify where searches are made geographically. There are a couple other things that you can do uh, with the Google Trends, but uh, I'll show them to you right now. So if you go to Google Trends, uh, it looks like this, right? I'm from the, from the United States, so mine defaults at the top right to United States. Um, so I'm going to put in an example a uh, key term that I want to search. Um, I like playing golf, so I'm just going to type in golf and see how it plays out. So here is the trend for searches uh, of the key term golf over a period of time. Um, at least when I use Google Trend, it defaults to one year. So here it says September and here it says September. So it shows you the trends for searches of golf over a one year period. You can change the period of time you want to search trends for here. So if I do 12 months, I could also do since 2004 all the way to present day. And you'll notice that golf has slowly downtrended over the years and I could see that happen. I mean, it is a dying sport, um, although I still really love it. I'm going to put this back to the last uh, 12 months because I, I usually like to look at the more immediate trends. You can also change the country for which the key term was searched. Um, so right now it's looking at the searches for golf within the United States, but you can also look for the searches for golf in Algeria if you wanted to or another country of some sort. Um, you can also type, right now it's looking at overall web searches. So people that went into google.com and typed the word golf and click search. But you can also look at how people search the term golf uh, when they look at images, uh, news search, so golf in the news, Google shopping, which is always very interesting because we're working in e-commerce. So you can see how people look up golf materials um, for them to purchase, so from a shopping perspective. You can also look at um, who has searched the term golf on YouTube. So you can do all these different things. I'm going to do Google Shopping real quick just to show you. So, so for golf, this has trended up, and then in the more recent months, it kind of plaid, plateaued out and kind of declined. There's one thing I also wanted to show you. I forgot to mention it earlier. So web searches is, is, the, is the default. So people go into google.com and searching golf. I want to explain how the y-axis in this graph uh, uh, what, what it represents. So you'll notice that in the y-axis there's a score from 0 to 100, right? So it's called Google Trends for a reason. It doesn't really tell you the exact number of searches that Google, that people have done for golf. I'm using, I'm going to stick with the golf example. It doesn't tell you the exact number of searches. Instead, it tells you the trend of searches within a particular period of time. Here, it's a one-year period of time. 100 means in the period of the last 12 months, 100 would be the highest point at which golf was searched. And then zero would be the lowest uh, point in time where golf was searched. And 50 would mean um, the point in time where golf was searched 50% of 100. All right. So no matter what kind of period of time you leave out, there will always be a point in the graph that touches 100. That point represents the max um, amount of golf searches made within that period of time. And then, for example, here it says 50, right? That means at this 
at this uh, at this date here, March third uh, through 9th of 2019, golf was searched at a frequency 50% of what it was searched here uh, when it was at 100. So I just want to explain that to you really quick because it's not very intuitive. You kind of have to read to understand that. But essentially, it tells you trends as opposed to absolute values. Um, so it generally, if you're trying to source a product, you want to find a product that is trending upwards as opposed to a product that is obviously trending downwards. Uh, but keep in mind that certain products and certain niches do have a kind of cyclic or uh, type of trending. So it kind of goes up and down. So you can't always look at one month and think that something is trending down. You want to back out, maybe look at it from 12 months or five years, and that will give you a broader picture of whether something is trending down. If I do it in the last four hours, then it may look like it's going up or may look like it's going down. It's hard to tell. This one looks kind of weird but for the most part I always leave it at 12 months because I want to know that a product is trending up if I got a product or a niche that looked like this I would be you know not completely sold I wouldn't discount the idea of this niche but because it's trending down towards the end that tells me that it's trending down it means people are searching this niche less and less it doesn't necessarily mean that this niche will die but Obviously, this that tells you that either there's some kind of cyclic um, uh, aspect or element to this trend, this this search uh, term, or it could be just simply trending downward soon and and on its way to not being a good niche. Here it tells you the uh, interest by subregion. So it tells you how many people have searched your term and where that where those searches come up the most. So Apparently, golf is searched the most in South Carolina, Arizona, Minnesota, Nebraska, and Michigan. And it makes sense because these areas have a lot of outdoor spaces as opposed to, let's say, New York, Los Angeles, or San Francisco, which don't have as much land to golf. So it makes sense that people that live in these middle states um, oftentimes search for golf more. They probably have better golf courses around those areas. Uh, and here are related queries and related topics. So it, it shows you other topics or queries that people search that also search for the key term that you inputted. So these are other topics that people who search golf also search. And although they look really foreign initially, I actually looked up what some of these meant. And these are mostly golf uh, applications or games, which is so funny because... Um, that means these golf games for your phone or for these golf game applications are actually searched for more than the actual golf sport itself, like the PGA Tour, which is kind of funny. But anyways, that is golf. Uh, that is Google Trends for you. The last thing I want to uh, show you is how to compare niches. Maybe you have two niches uh, that you want to sell and you don't know which one is better. Um, for example, maybe you want to sell golf gear or you want to sell tennis gear. Well, you can search both of these and then make a comparison. You could do more than two. You could do up to three, even more comparisons than that. So what you'll see here is that blue is golf, red is tennis. And you'll see that, one, it shows you the trends for the individual key terms, but it also shows you how they overlap. So here you can see golf, on average, at any point in time is being searched more than tennis, which makes sense. I would say that more people play golf than they do play tennis. But again, trends are always relative to the highest point in the key term that, that has that highest point. So here golf has the highest point at 100. And the red, the point here on the tennis line, which is the red line, is in relation to that highest point. Every point on both of these graphs are made in comparison to this highest point here. Okay, guys, just another reminder. And that is Google Trends. I use Google Trends every time I choose a product I want to sell. If it is trending up, that is a good time to jump in. If it's trending down, that may be a good time to pivot or choose a different niche. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next lesson.